Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to TMXing Adventures. My name is Lisa Keegan, and I realized I didn't have a microphone on, so sorry about that. Um, welcome. This afternoon, we are making some yummy vegan crackers in the black TM6 model. Now, if you have a TM31 or a TM5, um, that's okay. You can still make this, cook along to these videos later. If you've got a TM6 or a TM5 with cookie dough, you've got guided recipes, and you will find this on the US cookie dough. So if you can't find it when you search later in your filters, uh, sorry, in your recipes, go to your filters and change them. Add the US, the UK, and you can actually permanently personalize this. If you're having trouble doing that, reach out, I'd love to help. So let's get started on this recipe. Say hi if you're watching on this afternoon as well. So you'll notice straight away, being a US recipe, it actually is in Fahrenheit straight away when it comes to preheating your oven. For us, divide it by half, and that'll give you a Celsius on that. We'll talk more about the um, metric imperial stuff in a moment. So it says line two baking sheets of paper, okay? And then it's gonna tell us to do some flour. Now I'm gonna use gluten-free flour today. You can use your standard plain flour or even baker's flour if you'd prefer. Something to note, you'll see when I take the lid off, sales have gone negative. Do remember to hit your tear button down the bottom, hit it a bit harder, there we go, and it takes it back to zero. So in this goes, and we're going for seven grams. Seven ounces, I can't read, sorry guys. Seven ounces, not seven grams. And so seven ounces, if you're shopping for this and you're like, oh, what are they asking for? Multiply by three and add a zero is how we work out our um, ounces to grams. My um, gluten-free flour is really cakey this afternoon. It is extremely hot and sticky here. So in that goes, I'll just try and get a little bit more out seven grams so in this case it would be seven threes are 21 out of zero so 210 grams is how much um, flour was required okay next up we've got two tablespoons of nutritional yeast now I made mention of nutritional yeast yesterday so as I said it's normally found at the health food shops although Woolworths and Coles and um, bigger stores are now starting to uh, stock it in their micro kind of unique area. So it is like this little yellow substance. Uh, it's flaky. You don't use it weight for weight. So if you were going to put it in something that actually had parmesan as an ingredient, it's not 20 grams of this, 20 grams of parmesan. Mm -mm. It's like a tablespoon of this to about 50, 60 grams of what would have been parmesan in the recipe. So today, we I freeze mine by the way, hence the reason it's in a glad bag. It's come on the move for us with us um, when we've done our move over Christmas and it just lives in the freezer. We keep it in the freezer so that it um, just stays airtight and lasts kind of indefinitely. Two tablespoons, so we're talking big spoons. This is the flavor. Look at my poor spatula. That's why I bought the new gray one. I really should find, put this one, I should retire this one and find the other one. Okay, two tablespoons of nutritional yeast. I do think if you are not vegan and you're not cooking for somebody vegan, you could make this recipe and add 60 grams of parmesan. And I think it would be amazing. So I actually think just a little tip, if you're going, oh, these sound nice and I wanna try them on the weekend, I reckon you could do that, okay? There's a little takeaway for today. Okay, one teaspoon of maple syrup. I am using my, oh, here it is. Um, rice malt syrup, you could use honey or you could use maple. Okay, hello Carissa, lovely to have you on this afternoon. Normally I would just tip it in, but knowing my luck, I will make a big mess. So we won't go tipping it in today. We only need a teaspoon, it's not much. Okay, next up we're having half a teaspoon of salt. That's some more of our flavor in there. You may wanna pull that back a little bit if you've got Parmesan, if you do do the swap with Parmesan because Parmesan is naturally salty anyway, okay? So there that is. A few more ingredients and we're done. Two ounces of olive oil. So in that goes. So two ounces is going to be 60 grams. 60 grams? Two, four, six out of zero, yeah. Seems like a lot, doesn't it? It's like what I nearly add into our beautiful um, zucchini slice recipe. But by the looks of it, it's our binder. So I guess it's like the equivalent of butter in a recipe. That's what our olive oil is doing. 
Next up, four ounces of water. So it's just a little bit of water, in it goes. Actually, it's a fair bit of water. And four ounces, and we're just about done. Insert the measuring cup into the mixing bowl lid. Next. And it's gonna knead for six seconds and bring it together. Let me just clear some space while it's doing that because I've got some tricks to show you today about working with crackers and making these yourself. So I need a bit of space on my bench. Next, transfer to a floured surface. So that is literally all it takes to create that dough and get that dough together. How cool is that? Now, what we want to do, let me first of all check it needs, whether it needs to come together more because our gluten-free flour is flighty. Because of the corn flour and or our root in there, it is a bit more flighty. Um, if you've got your good old plain or, or um, baker's flour, it's probably going to combine better. So I'll just give it a scrape down and I'll actually hit the back arrow and just do that one more time and see if I can grab in those last few bits. But it's actually looking fantastic. Sometimes I find some brands of gluten-free, you need to go a little bit light on them so that you don't, um, so that you can actually make it come together. All right, baking paper. This is the trick of the trade. So let me show you how to make amazing crackers. So we need to start off with two sheets of baking paper, about the size of your tray, okay? One is gonna be the bottom, and actually eventually you're gonna end up with three sheets. But I'll just show you with two today, and I'll explain the other part. Now this is, in this recipe, it's gonna ask us now to take half of the batch. So transfer to a flour surface and knead into a bowl and let it rest 10 minutes. I don't have 10 minutes, and I bet you you probably don't want to either in your kitchen, because you get distracted and forget to ever come back. Uh, like I do and it says dust the work steps with flour not gonna worry and then it tells you to cut the dough in two so I'm going to just take out and by the way that dough looks amazing even for gluten free so we're gonna take out half I'm gonna leave the other half in there because we'll deal with the other half in a second go at this so there is approximately half of the dough We'll leave the other bit behind. Now, ordinarily it says to roll each dough into a rectangle using lightly dusted rolling pin, transfer dough to a paired baking sheet. This is the normal instructions and I'll tell you what I do. Brush the dough with some olive oil and cut each rectangle into 40 pieces. So you're looking at about 80 pieces in total. Sprinkle with nutritional yeast, some seasoning. I'm gonna use just some mixed herbs on that one and then cook for 10 to 12 minutes at 100 and hang on at 220 okay that 450 is about our 220 so come over here let me just show you over here so i've got my little dough ball and it's actually quite nice to work with surprisingly sometimes our gf stuff i mean you wouldn't necessarily be using gf but i am sometimes your gf stuff can be really crumbly or it can be really sticky so surprisingly it's quite nice so i'm going to put it between two layers of baking paper now I've got a beautiful silicon roller, so actually a fondant roller, um, big W, Kmart might sell them. It usually has little bands on the side, so when you roll out your fondant, it's the same size for your cakes. And we're just gonna push it out, okay? You can probably do this with a rolling pin. And we're gonna make it nice and big. Now, if the mixture is super sticky, you can actually put this in the oven, and yes, it doesn't have toppings on it, but you could cook it like this and then sprinkle salt at the end and then put it back in a little bit longer for that salt to dissolve. Okay, But I think we'll see if we can get the top off this in a second. But the beautiful thing about working between baking sheets is number one, it's really clean. And number two, you can get a really nice edge on it in a second. So let me show you how to make a really nice edge on your crackers. Because the things that annoy me about crackers is the edge, having messy edges. I don't like it. So let me show you today how to make nice edges. So first thing I'm gonna do is get it out nice and big to about the size I want and about the thickness I want. Now, they didn't actually tell me, I don't think, how thick, but just going by their picture, I can kind of take a guess. So I'm happy with that thickness. Now, how do I make it so that it's nice rectangle? First thing you do, if possible. Now, if it's a really sticky dough, you may not be able to. You may actually have to put it in a fridge, chill it so that the, the oil goes hard and then you can do it. But in this case, we'll be fine. So. Here we go, watch this, I love this. So take the top layer and bring it back. Fold it out of the way, and then we're gonna grab the bottom layer and we're gonna crease it over. Now we're not creasing it too far, easy bits, just enough to create a straight line. Then we can put the top over the top again and we can 
give it a roll sideways or press sideways more so until it's the same thickness as the rest of my dough. There's one straight line. Do say hi if you're watching on and if you've ever done this, let me know. Or if you're now gonna make crackers and do this, let me know. I think it's just a gold tip. I love, love being able to give you guys these tips. So now we'll just pull back the corner that was, fold it over, make sure there's contact obviously between the dough, push it down again, bring this back over and let's square that edge off. And just keep pushing it around the square or the rectangle so that you end up with that and you'll just have one side that's not quite right. Every other side will be beautiful. If you're working with thicker dough that needs to be thicker than this, you may find that each time taking the side back out, so for example, pull this back out, move that away, put that down and then go this way. You may find you need to do that with thicker kind of things that you're making. So there's this line down, straight line again, push it to the side. I'm going to show you in a minute the final product. I love this. And then we go around to this last side. Let's put that out of the way. And look at that. So don't go too heavy on this last one because remember it's going to have one bulgy end, which is okay. One bulgy end out of four, too bad. And if you've been really particular, uh, which I haven't been necessarily today, you'll actually end up with nice parallel sides, which is kind of cool. So let me show you now what we've got. That extra probably 30 seconds, you're doing it without a camera. Look at that. So square ends and all. So I just love that. Hello, Pamela, how are you today? Um, yeah, so there you go. There's our straight, let me come over this way, sorry straight edges. Now I do have today my little roller from the mix shop. I don't know if they're still available. You'd have to go check, but it's awesome. It makes little triangles. So it means that I can just go like this and follow my outside line. Occasionally, if it starts picking things up, I will um, put some plain flour, some gluten-free plain on it, but otherwise it's just perfect. Now this dough is getting quite sticky, which makes me want to actually put it in the fridge. Uh, but for today, let's just, because you did, we're supposed to have a 10 minute rest time, remember, we didn't do that. But let me just show you what that looks like. So there you go. Can you guys see that? Let's go that way, nice and close. Now we do need to finish it off the way it's suggested. So we need something, they said some bagels, something or other. I don't have that. I do have some mixed herbs. Um, I do have, it says to put some more nutritional yeast. I don't know if it says to put salt, but I'm going to put salt because I find... Salt and biscuits go together beautifully. Now remember, you've also got a second amount of this in your thermo mix still. So as much as I've shown you half of it, there's still more. So you can just then finish off and do the other half. So that is how easy it is to make vegan crackers for those days when you, need, you might not have cheese, or maybe you've got a friend coming over that is vegan, or maybe you're vegan. Like it is so incredibly easy to make amazing food in our Thermomix. And that's what I love about the Thermomix. Pre-Thermomix, because there is no way I would be buying these. But with the Thermomix, we can make them and we can make them with confidence to know that they're gonna work out beautifully and even have square edges. So that's it for me this afternoon, guys. Let me know if I can help you with a demonstration. We do have a bowl blade and lid offer coming uh, for hosting a demonstration uh, next month. So starting the 31st of this month which is a pretty cool offer. We can jump online and cook together if you've got a Thermomix or otherwise I can just cook for you if you don't and show you what it's all about. But otherwise, as well as that, the blacks, we still have stock available. So get in before that's gone. They're anticipating not last much longer, which is pretty cool. They have been super popular. So if you're wanting to get your hands on a black, get in quick, let me know and I'll send you through a link so you can get one on your bench. And they are dispatching them excitingly next week. We're gonna see them start moving on the 28th. So that's super cool as well. But otherwise guys, if I can help you with anything regarding your Thermomix, do reach out if you've got questions about a recipe, something you're making and you need assistance and you're going, why is this failing? Ring me, do not throw it out, pick up the phone, send me a DM, PM and go, Lise, how do I fix this please? And I'm happy to help. But otherwise, guys, take care. I can't wait to come back and cook with you more next week. I might even show up over the weekend because I still want to do the impossible pie, remembering the milk. So <laughs> I'm hoping to come to you live, depending on the weekend, uh, to show you.
try. So otherwise guys, do take care and I can't wait to see you next week for some more thermomixing, hopefully getting more inspired and confident with your thermomix in your kitchen. But take care and we'll see you then. Bye guys.